everyone so on today's frequently asked questions video we're going to address photos and photo mats and um, some of the questions that i have about things that are done after the video is done recording uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our first question that i get all the time which is where do you get your white photo mats from so i actually don't buy these or or have them printed like a normal photo what I go ahead and do is I just use a word processor, for me that's pages, and I create a document that has a bunch of shapes just with a border on them. And then I add a text box here, for example, that says three by four photo. And depending on um, what I need, sometimes I can just rotate that three by four photo sign and create a horizontal three by four photo spot instead of a three by four vertical photo spot. So I just kind of play around with those text boxes and I print them on just regular printer paper. A lot of the times my printer paper is actually um, like kind of recycled like from a stack of papers maybe that got misprinted or anything like that. So I'll use the back side of it um, as my photo mats. So here to create a box I just uh, start with a shape and then um, on pages it's defaulted to that fill color so I just put no fill and then I just change the border style so for me instead of using a picture frame I use a line border and um, my border line ends up being like that rough looking sort of like chalk almost uh, border edge and I just use that as my border and then I go in in the arrange tab and I will change the size of my photo box or my shape box to the size of the photo that I need so in this case it'd be a three by five photo but you can make them three by four uh, four by six and on and on and I put as many of those onto an eight and a half by eleven paper as I can and I print them out and that's how I do my photo mats the second question I get all the time is how do you plan your layouts without pictures? So first of all, I never make a layout or work with a collection unless I have pictures in mind that I'm going to be using on those pages. Um, like you will never see me make dance pages because my kids, have, none of my kids are dancers. So I always do layouts that I have pictures four. <clears throat> now with that being said, the way that I, the way that I make my pages comes in two different scenarios. Most of the time I plan my layouts based on my pictures. So I will look at uh, a collection of photos that I want to use for a particular layout and I look at them and I say, okay, do I, how many pictures do I want to work with? Are they vertical or are they horizontal? And I will base my layout selection based on those pictures. Okay, the second scenario is I plan my pictures after I've created my layout. Okay, and I love to do this when I have lots of pictures to work with. So I'm just gonna show you guys a quick example of both of these scenarios. So to start off, I'm going to kind of explain to you what I do with my photos. So when I'm doing a yearly album, what I do is I take all of the pictures from a certain year and I put them into a folder. So you'll see on the left um, side there is there's a folder that says 2013 scrapbook. What I do is I create a folder with all the photos from that year and then I break up. I make 12 albums inside of that folder and those are going to be broken down into the month. So there'll be a January 2013, February 2013, March 2013, all the way through December of 2013. And then all of my photos from that month get put into their month album inside of that 2013 scrapbook folder. Okay, so it's the same thing on PC or any kind of photo manager you're working with. I'm just breaking it up for my yearly albums in, into monthly size manageable pieces. So just as an example for this video, we are going to be working with July of 2018. Now, as you can see in the top left corner there, it says July 2018 and it says 4,314 items. 
So I'm obviously not going to send 4,314 pictures to the printer to try and rifle through them and scrapbook them uh, later on. So what I do is I just go ahead and I eliminate a bunch of duplicates, uh, irrelevant items, screenshots, different things that I'm never going to scrapbook and I try and bring it down to a more manageable number. So for in this instance, um, July ended up with five, about 500 and some pictures. Okay, so then what I go ahead and do, and I do, this is in the photos app on a Mac computer. I go ahead and make a contact sheet and I change the amount of columns uh, and I make it work. I normally never have this many photos to work with in a month. It's usually only one or two pages, um, but in this case, it ends up being quite a few pages. So I'm going to go ahead and print this just in black and white, just a rough copy. You don't, this step is very unnecessary, but I really, I need this kind of visual to process um, my layouts and process sort of my thoughts. And I like to have a paper in front of me that I can write notes on and I can reference it. So um, basically once I print out this contact sheet, I staple it together and I put uh, just like a, a note paper on it and I plan out my layouts for the month. So I usually try to do this a whole, uh, I usually try to make a print out like every month worth of this, these contact sheets. So January through December and I try to plan out my whole album like this all at one time because some months like July here are going to have more layouts than I allot in a, a yearly album. So in a yearly album, if I'm doing 100 pages, I'll allow roughly eight layouts per month. But some months I won't need a full eight. But as you can see here in July, I needed 12 layouts. So what I do is I use my contact sheets to plan out the layouts that I want to make. Okay, so you can see here that I have one page allotted for being at the lake, putting the dock in. Um, I have Two, layout, two layouts planned for a cousin sleepover, two layouts planned out for a 4-H camping trip, one layout planned out for camp, kayaking, and then, uh, so this is an, a situation where I would plan out my layout based on pictures that I have, okay? So when I, let's say, for an example, look at my kayaking pictures, okay? If most of them are going to be horizontal orientation, I'm going to plan my kayaking layout based on horizontal pictures. Okay, so when I'm doing a cutting guide for this, I might use a summer theme kit, I might use a water theme kit, and whatever, if I'm going to use three kayak pictures for that layout, I'm going to make sure that I use um, a layout with a cutting guide that has three photos on it or I'm going to improvise and add a photo slot to one that might have less. And if I'm going to be using horizontal photos for that kayaking layout, then I'll make sure that if it's, uh, if it's a cutting guide that has vertical photos on that page, I might rotate that page 90 degrees to make it work for those pages. But my point being that when I work with the layout and work with that collection kit that day that you see me on video, I am actually intending to put those kayaking pictures on it after my video. So I did in fact use my photos to plan out my layout. Okay. And that is what I do most of the time. So most of the time, this is my process. Okay. My second scenario is when I use my layout to determine which photos that I want to use. So for an example here in July of 2018, I highlighted all of the tubing pictures that we did on one of our weekends. Now there is 194 photos selected as you can see in the top right corner. There is no way I'm going to print out 194 pictures to put on two pages. Okay, so I allowed two pages for my tubing and boating pictures that I took from July on July 17th, 2018. As you can see, I put a little note on my paper that says 194 photos. Print after the layout is made. So what I do is I make the layout. So in this case, a double. I'm probably going to do 
a double page layout. Okay, so what I would do is a double page layout because it's all one theme and I want to put more pictures on a page than I probably normally would. Okay, so let's say that my double page layout allows for eight to 12 pictures. Well, I'm not going to print out 194 photos and then put only on then only use 10 to 12 pictures. So what I'm going to go ahead and do in this case is I'm going to make my layout first, look at the orientation of the photos on those double layouts. And I am going to use that to decide which pictures to print. And I find this really mentally helpful for me because when I look at 194 pictures, I have no idea which ones that I want to use, which ones I want to pick. And I find that picking the layout first helps me not be so overwhelmed when I have to eliminate such a large amount of pictures. So that is the scenario I do when I use my layout to pick my pictures. Okay, so the next question I get all the time is do I leave the white photo mats on my page when I put my pictures on it? And the answer is no. So I use just scrap paper basically to do my white photo mats because I intend to use them for the video only and then take them off and replace them with my pictures. Now, if you do want to use those white photo mats on your page and use them to mat your actual photo, you would just have to trim down your photos, but you would have to make sure to use good quality scrapbooking cardstock. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of just go through and show you what I do after I after a video is typically done. So, a little bit a little while ago I did the I Love Cats uh cutting guide and theme pack and so here I printed off some of my pictures that I had intended to use with this double layout. So as you can see here I have more pictures than what can fit onto this layout. Um, so on my contact sheet I had all these pictures and I knew that I wanted them to be, I wanted the, the, the vertical pictures that I had to sort of be the focus. And um, I printed now, if you're more organized than I am, you would not have even printed out these spare these spare pictures. But like I, as you can see before, um, when I'm going through my pictures, I eliminate like duplicates and I eliminate uh, blurry pictures or screenshots or irrelevant things. But I don't like to go further than that because sometimes when I print my pictures, I end up not, you know, not liking some or liking others more. So I like to have some options once I have my picture still printed and a lot of the times I um, I print out like a whole bunch of pictures like I'll print a year's worth of pictures just because you get volume discounts when you order lots of pictures and stuff like that so I'll go ahead and I will typically order like a year's worth or at least a month's worth of, of pictures and most of them are going to be four by six size and I'll trim them down to three by four or three by three photo sizes um, so I really do like working with the four by six size pictures. Okay. And I only will print larger, like five by sevens or eight by tens in specialty type situations. And I will specifically print those. I won't just randomly do that. Okay. So here, as you can see, I'm just trimming down all of my photos down to size and I'm kind of just placing them on top of my white photo mat just to kind of see how they're looking. And if I want to change something up or swap in another picture that I had printed. So for me, I chose this layout based on my pictures because I knew that I really wanted to showcase those vertical photos. So I have a photo of Chubbs laying on top of our cards as my daughter and I were trying to play. And that was a showcase um, photo for me because that is so his personality to really get involved in whatever you're doing. Okay, and then my daughter, she's holding him at the animal shelter when we picked him up to bring him home. So that was another pivotal moment in his life with us. So here, as you can see, I'm just taking out these three by four photo mats and sometimes they get damaged and that's okay because for me, they are throwaways. So they were already, you know, recycled or plain, just plain paper. And so now I'm just gonna get rid of them. I'm not gonna try to reuse them. 
Now, I just use like this um, piercing tool here to kind of help loosen things up if they happen to have stuck down. And most of the time I am mindful of where I have to put my photos. So I, I when possible, will actually not adhere, uh, like put adhesive on that part of the embellishment that overhangs the picture or something like that. So sometimes I, I forget and sometimes I do do it. Um, and then from there, I just finish off the page. Okay, so once my pictures are on, kind of look at it and so um, a lot of times I will put a titling or I will finish off journaling in a journaling box if there was one on the page. So uh, I just want to thank you guys all for watching this week's video. Hopefully it was helpful and uh, next week we will have another tutorial video doing a cutting guide and um, sorry about missing last week. Um, we were, lots of things came up last week and I just, I needed to catch my breath and I just needed to catch up on some things and it just didn't work out to get a video done. So, um, but we will have one next week and, um, I hope you guys all have a great weekend and thank you so much for watching.